Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'll show you how to make super cost-effective Christmas ornaments using spun cotton. This is a very old technique used to make Christmas ornaments in the beginning of last century. First I'm gonna make a bird. Take a piece from absorbent cotton roll and twist it to make something resembling chicken leg. Wind it with threads for cotton held its shape, cover with white glue, you are to thin it with water so that the glue wasn't too sticky, and then cover with more layers of cotton and let dry. Form a small lump out of cotton, wind with threads and glue over the chicken leg. This is the head. Cover with thin layers of cotton till you get the required size. Form a cone from a small piece of cotton, this is a beak, and glue it to the head. My burn turned its head and looks around, but you can also direct the beak straight. While the cotton on the head is still wet, make small indentations in the place where the eyes will be with a stick. Now twist a wire loop for hanging and wrap it around the head. Then glue another layer of cotton to hide the wire and finally shape the head with fingers dipped in an ordinary egg white. Glue small lumps of cotton on both sides of the beak, these will be the cheeks. And also smooth and level everything with fingers. The fingers do not stick to the egg white and you can mold the cotton as you like, gluing thin pieces of cotton here and there to achieve a perfectly even surface. Cut out two drop-shaped pieces from layer of cotton roll, these will be the wings. Glue to the figure and cover with glue. Shape the wings, I used my nails to form stripes over the wings as if they were feathers and slightly raised the tips of the wings so that they stick out. After that, let dry again. Now the ornament can be colored. I decided to make a bright bird, a bit like a red cardinal, because I got a little tuft at the loop, so I painted it bright scarlet. I also painted a dark brown mask around the beak and darkened the flight feathers on the wings. I drew the eyes using shiny contour paint, you can also glue small black beads. After everything is dry, cover the ornament with white glue again and sprinkle with uh, mica flakes or glitter. Mica flakes is what were used for these ornaments years ago, but glitter will look just as good. I wanted to make the bird very bright and therefore I decided to make the tail out of real feathers. I really like using feathers in Christmas tree decorations. I had large red ostrich feathers and a set of smaller feathers, I took burgundy brown colored ones. And I glued the feathers around the tail, trying to hide the end of a large feather under the down. And finally, I put the bird on a branch. I had this metal twig, I bought it a long time ago at eBay, but you can, of course, take a piece of real twig. I also added some ribbons, bows and small bells for decoration. Of course, because of the fluffy long tail, the bird is not very true to nature now, so to speak, because cardinals do not have such tails, but the ornament with feathers look very bright and elegant and would make a pop over the Christmas tree. Next ornaments are snowmen. Here I was inspired by Department 56 ornaments, the snowmen are lovely and I wanted to recreate them. Snowmen, of course, start with round lumps. I made four of them for two snowmen. As well as for the bird, I formed a rounded lump and winded it up with threads to give the final shape. Twist wire loops for hanging. I wrapped the wire around the upper lump and tied the tails with threads to the lower one. And here we already get the general silhouette of the snowman. Coat both lumps with white glue and cover in thin layers of cotton, leveling the surface. After that let dry. I use a hair dryer to make it faster, but you can just hang it to dry overnight. Let's start shaping the face. Glue two lumps of cotton to the head in the places where the cheeks should be and two more small lumps for nose and chin. 
Take the egg white and cover the glued lumps with thin layers of cotton, smoothing and shaping the relief with your fingers. A thicker layer can be glued to the forehead to make the face even more realistic. Draw a smiling mouth with a stick and dip in the face where eyes will be. Smooth the surface of the entire head using tiny layers of cotton and fingers soaked in egg white and let dry. After the head is dry and you're sure you won't damage it, form the body. The snowman has a droplet-shaped figure, he seems to be running, so I increased the booty till the desired roundness. Everything is exactly the same for the second snowman. Glue two lamps for the cheeks, lamps for nose and chin, draw a smile and eyes with a stick, a line and dry the head and then shape the body to the desired shape and size. This figure is a droplet that is not curved but is looking down. Smooth the final layer with fingers dipped in egg white. This tip using an egg white for such ornaments came from my friend's grandmother. This is how these ornaments were made long, long time ago. The egg white doesn't stick to fingers, so you can apply even very, very thin layers of cotton and therefore get smooth surface of the desired shape. After drying, the egg white sets like a hard crust. You can still use diluted glue for same purposes, but egg white is way easier to work with. For those doubting egg white stability here, I want to remind that in old times the bricks were placed in a concrete based on eggs, so don't worry, everything will be fine. The disadvantage of this method is that cotton becomes yellowish and will definitely need to be painted over. Make arms. Cut off pieces of wire of the required length, wrap in cotton and then with threads. And coat it with glue and wrap in cotton making a kind of sausages. For the running snowman, bend the edges of the sausages up. These will be hands. Glue the arms to place and fix with a thin wad. Make a cuff from a narrow strip of cotton. Glue the second arm the same way. For the second snowman, bend the sausages in the shape of a boomerang. Yeah, I have a very imaginative thinking. And glue it so that the arms were folded over the belly. Carrot noses are just cotton cones rolled up over small pieces of wire and coated with glue. These can be crumpled during storage. If you are afraid of this, make them from polymer clay. After drying, paint the carrots orange. As I mentioned, the egg white gives the ornaments a yellowish tint, but the snowman must be white, and therefore I painted them in white acrylic. It's time to draw faces. My snowmen are with closed eyes. They are very simple to draw, but what cuties they turn out to be! And some makeup. Here you'll need some pink blushes. Take a soft brush and brown the cheeks and chin of the snowman. Glue the carrot noses and the faces are ready. I wanted to dress up the snowman, so gave the girl a hat with a large pom-pom and tied a scarf around the boy's neck. After drying, I painted the hat and scarf bright red. And finally, cover the snowman in white glue, especially faces, to fix the blush and sprinkle with some mica flakes or glitter. As you can see, these snowmen are quite easy to make, no complicated painting or any small details, but at the same time they are adorable and I hope many of you are willing to do them for your Christmas tree or as a gift. You can gather a whole family of such snowmen in different poses, put them on skis or skates or sleds, dress them up in heads and mittens of different colors and styles. In general, there's a whole field for your imagination. The next toy is a rocking horse. To make it easier to keep the correct form, I'll make a horse using a template. As always, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Cut the template from cardboard. Body, four legs and runners. Glue some cotton to cardboard templates with white glue, forming a volumetric half. Let dry and repeat on the other side. 
Some cardboard remained visible here, so I glued thin pieces of cotton finally forming a volumetric detail. Also align the legs and immediately glue them to the body, first on one side. To glue legs evenly, it's better put something underneath, for example a thick ruler until it dries. After drying, repeat from the other side, align the details of the legs, apply to the body and strengthen with thin pieces of cotton, also over the ruler or tablet. Let dry and cover the legs from the inside. Now you can finally align the figure using egg white with small pieces of cotton. I kept one hand dry to hold the ornament and take dry cotton and other one wet to attach cotton and aligning. At this moment I also made the horse hoovers, just wrapped cotton around the bottom of the legs, forming a thickening. After drying you can glue on the runners. I cut off two pieces of wooden stick, glued them to the hoovers and glued the runners onto the sticks. Attach the loop for hanging to the back. And paint everything white to remove the yellowish tint left after egg white. Now cut out an old piece of cotton for saddle and glue to the back of the horse. It will also hide the ends of the loop. Use a stick to shape the saddle. Make many many thin wisps from cotton. Cut out two triangles for ears of a suitable size from a thin layer of cotton. Coat the triangle with glue and attach to the head. Bend the edges inwards and shape the ear with a stick. And then cover ears and neck with cotton wisps forming a mane. Repeat from the other side. Finally, make the tail. Assemble several wisps together, coat with glue and give the desired shape. Coat the runners with glue for extra durability. It remains to paint the horse. I covered the mane and tail with silver paint and the saddle hoovers and runners are gold. I additionally painted the mane and tail with contour paint to make the shape more detailed. And with the same contour I drew some details of the bridle and the saddle attachment. Finally, coat the horse with glue and sprinkle with mica flakes or glitter. Such a horse is another option for simple but adorable Christmas ornament. It can be also decorated with rhinestones and pearls, bows, bells and the like. Just get creative and use what you have on hand. And finally, the most complicated ornament for today is Baba Yaga. This is Russian fairy tale witch. Start with the face. Ready-made face molds will not work here, so you'll have to sculpt yourself. I sculpted the face from polymer clay. Slightly stretch the face from below, forming a pointed chin. Two balls on the cheeks, as we did for snowman, and a small oval layer for the forehead. Of course, the most prominent part of the face in every sense is a nose. You don't need a Roman profile here, so this is not too complicated. Draw the mouth. Now attach two thin sausages over the eyes, forming the brow ridges. Attach two tiny lumps in the mouth, these are the teeth. And two more very thin sausages under the eyes to make a slice squint.
with a stick draw wrinkles on the forehead and near the eyes. I sculpted palms from two lumps of polymer, wrapping them around the stick. Then I made a mistake better if I sculpted them directly on those sticks that will be in the finished ornament and bake on sticks too, mine cracked when assembling. Since the polymer, although its color called flesh, turned out to be quite light, I painted my face and palms in darker color. Let's draw the face. White eyebrows, teeth and whites of the eyes. Red, a smile, brown eyes and the pupils. I apologize, for some reason the focus of the camera ran away all the time, I saw it only when mounting the video. The final touch, brown the witch with a sponge, passing over the cheeks, chin and nose. The face and arms are ready, you can take up the body. Make a wire loop approximately the size of the skirt and also twist the bait for arms, you'll get a thick letter T. By the way, here I'll show you the cotton that I used. This is ordinary medical absorbent rolled cotton, sold at pharmacy or big stores. Cut several thin strips of cotton and wrap them around the crossbar of the letter T, future arms. And wrap the white droplet in a wider strip and add some volume with cotton rolled into a lump to make a barrel-like base. Wrap it in a thin strip of cotton and coat with glue forming a skirt. Round it at the bottom and on top make a narrowing to the waist first at one side and then at the other. After drying make the future witch a hands-on hips pose and glue the face and palms. Tie the waist with a thread or ribbon to make it more visible. Form sleeves from two rectangular pieces of cotton, cover with glue and let dry. Put the witch facing down and attach the top layer of the skirt. To get beautiful realistic folds, the cotton fibers on the skirt must go from top to bottom. And I put a patch on booty. This will be an apron or shawl. I made folds on the apron and skirt with a stick. It's very easy trimming the edges and give the desired shape like this. Put a cotton ball on the back forming a hump and cover with a rectangle piece of cotton, this will be a vest. Cover with glue and form folds with a stick. After the back has dried, repeat all the same at the front side. Lay a thin layer of cotton directing the fibers from top to bottom, coat with glue, adjust the shape with a stick and form folds. Make a belt from a thin wisp. Make the vest front part from two rectangles. To make the joint at the shoulders less visible, tear off the edges of the rectangles with your fingers. Form folds with a stick and align the edges. I glued in a holder from a broken old glass ornament. This time I decided to paint the ornament gradually and before making further details, I painted the vest red and the undershirt orange. Which will hold two brooms. I made broomsticks out of chopsticks and then I inserted them into hands and when I inserted them into hands I broke both palms and had to glue them back. So better if you bake your palms directly on the sticks. Further from thin twisted cotton wisps make hair. And dress her up in a high hat or shawl. Paint the apron, skirt and shawl. Twist many, many wisps and make brooms out of them. Attach cuffs to sleeves, paint them red and add some red dots over the sleeves and apron. After drying, I dry brushed the ornament with white paint, highlighting the folds. 
And the final touch, cover with white glue and sprinkle with mica flakes. I copied this Baba Yaga from an old Soviet glass Christmas tree ornament. They are now very rare and hard to find and therefore I decided to make a similar one out of cotton. I think it will perfectly fit a retro Christmas tree. Hope you liked today's video and this old and forgotten technique to make super cost-effective but adorable ornaments. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell in order not to miss my new videos. Have a great day and bye!